Hi everybody. Um, I uh, got a message from the great people of this podcast asking if I wanted to preface this podcast with a message given um, the kind of times we're in right now, at least in the U.S. And actually, I want to, you know, I am an immigrant um, to the U.S. Um, and I, before coming to the U.S., I did face, you know, ethnic-based um, discrimination, of course. But I found that the racism in the U.S. is something just so deep and just really, really deep and like anything else I've ever seen before. And probably, you know, other countries like South Africa and Brazil who have similar racial dynamics probably might feel the same. And a lot of times when you talk about this kind of stuff, um, people outside of the U.S., like many times Europeans, for example, different European countries would kind of want to tell you, you know, um, but isn't, isn't the U.S. so terrible? Like, we don't have that, you know, or, or oh man, it's so bad, I'm, things are better here. You know, you don't know whether things are better there or not because white, white supremacy is basically a global phenomenon. The only difference is really how it manifests itself in different places and, and the amount of dialogue and discourse and um, conflict that exists because of it. If you have people who are completely powerless, uh, then there will not be protests regarding white supremacy because they just don't have a way to speak up. Um, if you have people who have not thought about the history and, and its connections and its roots to many different things, then obviously you won't have this discourse. So don't think that this is just an American thing. Uh, this is a global phenomenon. Um, anytime I see Eritreans um, trying to get away and sinking um, boats, um, and the way they're treated as refugees in Italy, for example, let's not forget Italy colonized Eritrea. I remember that white supremacy is a global phenomenon. Um, and of course, any time an unarmed person of color, I'd say a black person, is killed by police, um, we, we remember that um, police brutality is not also a, a U.S. specific thing. So even though these things are happening in the U.S. right now, and it might seem that talking about them might be U.S.-centric, this is really a global phenomenon. Um, I, I, I thought I had to say this because I just heard some people um, saying that, you know, coming out and saying Black Lives Matter or something like that will make their organization or their institution that that is supposed to be international seem like it's a uh, bias towards the U.S. or something like that. No, uh, this is a global phenomenon. It's just that we're witnessing it in the U.S. right now. And of course, uh, remember that um, <laughs> we should respond to things that are happening in our context in a specific way. So we are responding to what's happening in the U.S. right now. Um, in this way, uh, but it's not only a U.S. specific problem. Um, I think, I don't know what else to say, it's just so exhausting. Um, I think Red Eat said, we're not going to solve racism this month, and that's true. Um, this is just a long haul. Um, this is a marathon, and it's not going to be solved today. It's not going to be solved tomorrow. I'm happy to see that. It just seems that tech companies, for example, just can't, they've been forced to not ignore it right now. Um, I'm happy to see the virtual walkout at Facebook and people are talking about it at Google and I know we should demand more, but I'm just thinking about like 2012, you know, just saying Black Lives Matter was not acceptable. You were considered uh, someone who is an agitator, or conflict, you know, someone who's looking for conflict just for saying the words Black Lives Matter or even having a t-shirt or something like that. And I don't know, maybe this is progress. Maybe 
it just it, it feels hard to say that um it doesn't feel like progress it just feels like nothing has changed in some ways i feel like this is the same scene out of the late 60s uh, where i don't know the same brutality is happening and the same uh, the media is re- reacting in the same exact way against protesters um and uh you know people care more about property it seems than black lives but i don't know maybe maybe the fact that um people can't hide from it might be progress who knows it's really difficult to see <laughs> anything as progress right now but i'm just trying to think that maybe we are making progress it it i don't know feels like doesn't feel like it though um So yeah, I just wanted to send a message uh of to everyone who is uh just must be feeling terrible right now and to anybody to everybody else, you know. This is who is not in the US. This is not just a US thing. Um many of these events happen, you know, in the 60s the people in the, fighting for independence were very much uh connected with people in the civil rights movement right and the, the, all of these movements many times they're global um and so just because we're saying black lives matter don't think that this is just like US specific thing um i i, I don't know why i'm so focused on this but this really struck a nerve for me um so i think that's all i have to say for now and um take care of yourselves and thank you for listening okay bye